welcome to Nelson All of Our Cards. I'm Nelson. Today we're taking a look at Lord of the Rings, the card game. This game is awesome. I love this game. I'm so happy you clicked on the video. Today what we're doing is we're walking through the very first game to make sure that we all understand the rules correctly. I did this for Marvel Champions. If you want to see that video, it is linked below. And I, it got pretty, uh, and people enjoyed it. People really enjoyed it and I was asked to do it for Lord of the Rings. So I'm planning on doing it. So let's do it. This is the old core box. Probably a lot of you have the newer core box. The content is the same the new core box has a little bit more content but it is the same setup it's the same scenario everything is the same it just may look a little bit different from the box art what we are going to do is we're going to play through the very first game of lord of the rings passage through mirkwood with the starting decks and the recommended decks that they uh, give you in the box so the ones that they give you are the leadership or they give you one for each sphere, leadership, tactics, lore, and spirit. We're going to be playing as if we were playing two players, so it's sometimes called two-handed, with the leadership and spirit sphere. These are not necessarily the decks that I would play to win the game. These decks are meant to help you understand how each kind of one of the spheres functions, and not necessarily the best way to play. If you are playing, I would probably lean into maybe a bi-sphere deck meaning that you would use heroes from at least two spheres or a tri-sphere deck heroes from at least three spheres in order to get a well-rounded hero lineup so if you are interested in following along maybe some of the other uh some of the, some of the other scenarios i do have passage to work with i'm playing through progression style meaning that i am playing the games as if they were coming out today i'm taking them in order with the cards that were available at that time so if you are having trouble with a scenario then maybe i've already gotten there and you can go check out how i took on the scenario so maybe if you're having trouble with journey along the anduin you can go see how i did it with my deck what my hero lineup was and everything so that link will be below to the playlist for my progression series. But they do recommend that we play with these to just kind of get a feel. And that's how I, re I would recommend that as much, I, very, very much as well. Because these decks can help you get an idea of what each sphere can do, even though it's not as powerful as it can be if you do kind of combine some of the spheres. The other thing that I will say is that each of these decks is only 30 cards, where the minimum deck size in Lord of the Rings is 50 cards. That is okay because, again, these are just trying to get you to understand, and it's your first game, or one of your first games. And so a lot of people ignore that minimum deck limit for the core set and the what we have here. And I'm going to do that because this is the recommended or the, the given deck. I am going to be walking through every single stage, every single step until we beat this passage of Mirkwood scenario um, together. I will link below the turn reference sheet that I use and that I re highly recommend. And I have it actually on my screen right here. I typically am using that and it has helped me grow in the game so much because so much of this game and so much of getting better at this game is trying to learn and understand where and when you can take player actions and when it's most optimal to do so. So with that being said, let's dive into it. So the first thing that we do is we select our heroes. We select our decks, which has done been done for us. We shuffle the decks and we draw our starting hands. We are playing the leadership and the spirit sphere decks. Let's kind of talk about just like the heroes really quick, really briefly. So on the leadership side, we have Aragorn. Or Aragorn. He is a sentinel, meaning that he can defend for other players at the table. He has two willpower, three strength, and two defense with five hit points. And it says after he commits to a quest, we can spend one resource from his pool to ready him. We have Theodred. After he commits to a quest, choose a hero committed to that quest, add one resource to that hero's resource pool. Excellent. And then Gloin. Gloin, after he takes damage, add one resource to his resource pool for each point of damage he just suffered. They start at a threat of 29. We get that because we add all of these numbers up in the top left. So 12 plus 8 plus 9, 29. So our starting threat is 29 for our leadership deck. Let me just make sure that's on there. Jumping over to the spirit deck. Spirit is probably my favorite sphere. Just... Uh, just so you know, uh, we have Dune here. So 
he after he he can target enemies in the staging area as an attack typically you can only attack what is engaged with you if you have the ranged keyword you can attack enemies that are engaged with other players but dune here has a special ability he can attack those in the staging area and if he does so he gets plus one attack when doing so we have eleanor who we can exhaust Eleanor to cancel the win revealed effects of a treachery card just revealed from the encounter deck, then discard that card and replace it with the next card. And then we have Eowyn. Eowyn is so good. Eowyn is still makes it into some of my, you know, OP heroes. Let's go tackle the hardest quest we can. Eowyn is a strong contender of one of those heroes. She has an action to discard one card from your hand to give Eowyn plus one until the end of the phase one willpower and then this effect may be triggered by each player so if i wanted to the leadership player and the spirit player could discard to give her plus two so really cool stuff so if you see over actually down it's going to be down on my screen i'm looking at the, the kind of layout on the screen this is where i'm going to have the different phases and we're going to highlight each one as we go through just so you can we can make sure that we're all on the same page and we're following along because again this is a pretty complex game uh also i forgot to say we start with 24 over here so 8 plus 9 is 17 plus 7 is 24 we're gonna have the spirit team start as our first player and the first thing that we do is we draw and resolve mulligans the way that mulligans work in this game is you draw six cards if you don't like your hand you disc are you shuffle all the cards back into your deck and draw again so pretty pretty tough mulligan so compared to some of the other games so we got six everyone gets six cards let's go ahead and take a look and see what we got so we got a hasty stroke hasty strokes allows us to cancel shadow cards really strong stand and fight we can go get some allies from a discard pile we got lorian guide unexpected courage is really strong dwarven tomb and will of the west the some of the things that i'm really looking for in an opening hand for this starter deck we can just go ahead and look i'm just going to look at it i'm i am going to mulligan sorry <laughs> hiccups i am going to mulligan this this deck i would really like a northern tracker I would really like a test of will and a favor of the lady would be nice or any of like the Gandalfs or threat mitigation. So this is this is OK, but really, I'm, I would love to have a northern tracker because northern trackers are really, really good. So we shuffle it all back together and we draw six more cards. And if you don't like this hand, that sucks. <laughs> you're, you're stuck with it. You are stuck with your second hand no matter what. So we'll shuffle this up and we got two four six this is our hand hopefully we like it dwarven tomb strength of will strength of will isn't bad here uh will of the west lorian guide lorian guide there's our northern tracker excellent mulligan let's go let's go over here to our leadership player we've got six cards coming in for the leadership we got two four six let's go ahead and take a look we've got Ever Vigilant, and here we're looking for Steward of Gondor. Steward of Gondor is such an incredibly good card. Highly, I mean, it hardly ever doesn't make it into one of my decks. So we got Ever Vigilant. We got a Snowborn Scout. We've got a uh, Common Cause, Guard of the Citadel, Grim Resolve, and a Longbeard Orc Slayer. We're going to go ahead and mulligan this hand. Again, we're looking for one of those Steward of Gondors. That can really help us catapult and just get significant improvements to <laughs> to our uh economy which can really just kind of catapult us to victory so let's see let's hopefully get something good we got two four six hey hey, hey look at that steward of gondor snowborn scout snowborn scout uh silver lone archer another steward of gondor however you cannot play both of these because they are unique this symbol up here in the top let's see if that can focus there it is means that it's unique meaning you can only ever have one of them on the table at the same time a lot of the are all of the heroes have that as well and then some of the allies will as, have that as, as well however since we have two of these one of these is going to be an excellent contender to bump up aowen's uh ability here and we got all the allies leadership is kind of the ally aspect and so it's nice to see four of those even if we didn't like it we're stuck with it so we will 
go with that. Okay, now we resolve set up on the encounter card. So let's go ahead and read it. We'll go ahead and get into all of the lore and let's do it. So flies and spiders, 1A. You are traveling through Mirkwood Forest carrying an urgent message from King Fandrel to Lady Galadriel of Lorien. As you move along the dark trail, the spiders gather around you. That's been one of my nightmares before. So set up search the encounter deck for one copy of Forest Spider and one copy of the Old Forest Road. Add them to the staging area, then shuffle the encounter deck. So also this encounter deck is made up of... I probably should have said this earlier, but these symbols right here on the quest card determine what cards you are going to grab in order to generate the encounter deck. So this comes from the spiders, Ungala spawn. We don't like that. That's going to kill us. Uh, we have the Dolgador orcs, and then we have the, where are they? And then the Merkwood forest uh, cards. So all of those are shuffled together in order to form our deck. And what are we looking? We're looking for forest spider and old forest road forest spider and old forest road there's old forest road and then forest spider so these have threat and we'll talk a little bit about it more when we get into the travel phase but there's the staging area which is kind of what we are questing and trying to manipulate around and then that's going to be made up of different locations and enemies we can engage those enemies to fight them sometimes we don't have a choice we in automatically will engage those enemies and fight them and also the locations the locations we can then try and get around or travel to to get rid of their threat and then i'm going to actually let's just go ahead and read 2b while we're here or 1b while we're here so flies and spiders the nastiest things they saw were the cobwebs dark dense cobwebs with threads extraordinarily thick often stretched from tree to tree or tangled in the lower branches on either side of them there were none stretched across the path but wherever but whether because some magic kept it clear or for what other reasons they could not guess. That is from The Hobbit. This, we progress from this stage once we put eight progress tokens on this card. There are three stages in this quest. There are four cards because when we get to stage three, we're going to choose one of these randomly. So there are three stages. And once we get to eight, we'll go to two and we will read what we have to do at that point. I'm going to put that right there. And then we've got our encounter cards here. This is going to be the staging area. So we've got those. And now we're off to the races. We're ready to start the game. The first thing that we do is the resource phase. So each player adds one resource to each of their heroes and draws one card. This all You also do get to draw this card in the first round of the game. So you do start the game with seven cards, which is pretty nice. So... These resources are from Buy the Same Token. I love the Buy the Same Token stuff. I think they do an incredible job with quality. Um, I have those. These are my progress counters. And then my damage counters are also wooden. I highly recommend Buy the Same Token. Also, this sweet threat tracker is from them. So it's very pretty. I only have one of them. So we have spirits over here with the, uh, with the, the core set threat tracker. This is my first player token, and let's go. So the first player at this point can play any allies or any attachments that they want. This also is the time, or at this time we can play any actions. So these event cards, we can play those at any player action window. We can do this now or we can do it later. Again, the craziest thing and the biggest thing that has helped me with this game is learning when I can play the player actions. And I will walk through methodically the first couple of rounds, and then I'm, I'm going to have it up. You can reference it, um, but I'm not going to play actions every single time, but we do have that option. Okay, so we added, and we're going to draw a card into Power of the Earth. Pretty cool. And then at this point, we have the opportunity to play actions. I'm not going to. And then our one card for leadership is going to be Brock Iron Fist. Uh, who is a very expensive ally. Okay. So let's uh, let's take a look and see what Forest Spider and Old Forest Road do before we make any decisions. Old Forest Road is has one threat 
and three progress tokens before it gets cleared. Response, after you travel to Old Forest Road, the first player may choose and ready one character they control. So that's actually a good traveling effect. Usually they're not. <laughs> and then the old are the forest spider threat 25. So it's going to engage any player that has a higher than 25 threat. Then, um, sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> the, uh, after a forest spider engages, a player gets plus one attack until the end of the round. So we do start with 29 threat over here. So we know we're at least getting the forest spider can engage here before we have the opportunity to optionally engage over here with the spirits uh, player or the leadership player, but we may not do that. We'll just see how it goes. Okay. So what we want is we want some, well, ideally what, what we kind of want is to get this Northern tracker onto the table. I have three resources. The Northern Tracker costs four. It's up here in the up here in the top. But if we have the Northern Tracker, then we can start adding tokens onto the Old Forest Road while they're in the staging area. Um, in the meantime, it may be nice to get a Lorian guide out there. I honestly am not a huge fan of any of our options here, which is fine which means that we could just save some money. I think I'm just going to save some money and hang on to the Northern Tracker. We could play Power in the Earth to give this minus one, but I want to immediately travel there. And so the threat isn't going to matter for that long. And so let's hang on to Power of the Earth. We're just going to, we're going to, we're going to say we're good. We're good. We're going to pass it over to the next player, the leadership player. They're going to play some cards because we're definitely going to play Steward of Gondor. The leadership deck has a significantly higher cost curve than the spirit deck just right out of the box and so steward and gondor we can attach to a hero we are going to attach it to one of our heroes over here and we're going to attach it to aragorn so we're going to spend two resources aragorn and theodred uh there they are usually they're over here and i was like where did my things go to play steward of gondor on aragorn make sure that that all still looks okay I'm going to back these up just a little bit, just so we have enough room. Boom, boom, boom. We can exhaust Steward of Gondor to uh, add two resources to the attached hero's resource pool. So this is a player action. We could actually do this at any time that we wanted to. Might as well do it right now, though. So there is Aragorn. Now we have the Snowborn Scouts or a silver load archer and this matters for multi-sphere decks not necessarily as much for this monosphere deck the resources on a hero can only be paid used to pay for cards from that hero's sphere of influence or gray neutral cards right now the only gray cards that i believe we have in the core set is gandalf so Gandalf, we can use resources from anybody's pool to pay for, but all of these purple cards, if say, if say we had this, just pretend, just pretend, like say we were running this hero lineup, we could not spend three, two from here and one from here to pay for this purple card because we only have two leadership resources and one spirit resource. Since we have a resource on Gloin, it's a third leadership, so we could technically play the archer. I don't think we're going to do that. I think we're going to play a snowborn scout, though. So let's go ahead and spend one resource to play a snowborn scout. The snowborn scout has a response. After a snowborn scout enters play, choose a location. Place one progress token on that location. Boom. One progress token down. We got two more to go. We could play another snowborn scout. We are probably, you know what? Let's just, no, we're going to hang on to it. I feel like we're going to, we're probably going to want the Snowborn Scout to uh, clear something later in the game. So let's just hang on to that. It also gives us, keeps us our money a little bit. So we're going to hang on to this other Snowborn Scout, but we know the spider is going to come and attack us. Um, at this point, I'm going to do another shameless plug. Me 
Jason D20 Woodworking and Astari did a video on strategy tips for Lord of the Rings. I'm going to link that in the video description below as well. But one of the things that we talk about in that uh, video is talking about what are each of your characters going to be doing and planning that out strategically over the round. They can either quest, attack, or defend, and typically only one of those three things. And so we know the spider is going to engage here because our threat is high enough. So the spider is going to engage, meaning that it's going to attack with a three damage. We're going to have the Snowborn Scout defend that. If it's not defended, all the damage does have to go to a hero. And I don't really want to do that. So we've got the Snowborn Scout. That's going to be our defender. It has four hit points with one defense. So if we attack with Theodred and Aragorn, we could win or we could defeat that forest spider. So let's plan on doing that. And we know we can ready Aragorn after he commits to a quest. We can spend one resource from his resource pool to ready him. And then we, if we travel to Old Forest Road, the first player chooses one ready, one character they ready and ready. Uh, that's probably fine. That's probably fine. Um, because we we can we can attack with Gloin. So we'll quest. With Aragorn, quest with Theodred. And the reason I want to quest with Theodred is after he commits to a quest, choose a, another hero committed, to, or choose a hero, it could be Theodred, committed to that quest and add one resource to that hero's resource pool. Theodred is excellent because we can start passing those resources over here because right now with Steward of Gondor, the leadership player is going to have a significantly better economy than the spirit player. Spirit is all about questing. So let's have Theodra try and quest every single time so we can start passing some money over to the spirit player. Um, other than that, that feels about good. So let's go into the quest phase. So players commit characters to the quest. This is the first thing that we do. We have player actions that we can do at this point as well. But let's go ahead and look and see what we're committing to the quest. We are definitely going to commit Eowyn. She has four. So right there, that's four. We're showing three, and we're going to flip one card per player, so two cards. So we've got four. Eleanor's ability only works if she is ready, because you have to exhaust her. And then Dune here is a good attacker. So let's quest with Theodred. After Theodred commits to a quest, choose a hero committed to that quest and add resource so we'll choose aon over here so that's gonna be five let's go ahead and do aragorn for six and then we're gonna spin one of his resources to ready him he is still technically considered committed to the quest so we have two three seven i don't know how i got six i i, I miscounted so we're at seven we're showing three um I think we're good with that. I think I'm good with that. I think I think I'm good. Um, okay, so seven. We'll flip two cards. This first one is a great forest web. So to travel here, each player must exhaust one hero he controls to travel there. That's two. And then we've got ooh a delivery of uh driven by shadow. When revealed, each enemy in each location currently in the staging area gets plus one uh, threat until the end of the phase. If there are no cards in the staging area, this gains surge. So at this point, we have the option to trigger Eleanor's ability if we want to. So let's count it up and let's see what happens. So if we've got we've got one, two, three, four, five. So that would go eight to seven. Mm. Or we could exhaust Eleanor and see what else comes out. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that's okay. We did we quested for seven. We did not make it, so we our our threat goes up by one each. Nope, no, not 35. Oh, geez, that'd be bad. So we're at 30 and 25. We quested unsuccessfully. That's okay. We, I'm okay taking that one threat raise there because Spirit is pretty good at mitigating that. And also, I don't know what's next. It could be way worse. So the one threat is not that bad. At this point, we could go to the Great Forest Web, but we're going to get a Northern Tracker. I'd rather just not travel there. So let's travel to the Old Forest Road. Um, yeah, we'll just travel to the old forest road. 
I can choose to unexhaust Aowen. This may not be the strategically right time to do it, but it's fine. And then um, we resolve the quest. We have player actions, travel phase. So this is now the travel phase. We're going to travel to the old forest road. We have player actions. I'm not going to do anything. Now the encounter phase. The first thing that we can do is each player may optionally engage one enemy. There's only one enemy out here. We know it's going to be engaging the leadership enemy. So at this point, we have the option. If we would rather have the spirit player engage, which we do not, we could. So um, let's just say we're not going to engage. No player actions. Now we go into engagement check. So enemies engage player, starting with the first player, the highest engagement, uh, starting with uh, the highest engagement cost, but equal to or lower than the player threat next player. So now... The first player, 20, oh, this 25 is actually going to engage. So hold on, let's back up, let's back up, let's back up. Uh, we're going to optionally engage over here with the leadership player because <laughs> I forgot because we bumped our threat up. So if we looked at that, this is our first player. So th the forest spider would actually engage the spirit player before it has a chance to engage the leadership player. But instead, the leadership player is going to be gracious enough to take the forest spider into their engagement area. Uh, player actions etc combat phase we're going to deal one shadow card to each enemy defend so the first player resolves any attacks that nope nothing and then we remove to the next player so here we go we've got this four spider here we're this is the attacking enemy if we had multiple enemies we could choose which one was attacking so this one is our first attacker we're going to exhaust a defender if any we're going to exhaust this Snowborn Scout to say we are defending against this. Attack of three plus if this is a shadow card, it could be bad. Now we do have a hasty stroke. Um, I play very little two-handed. Uh, no, we don't. We uh, we toss our hasty stroke. Never mind. Don't even have to worry about that. Okay. Resolve shadow effects. So shadow. Defending player must choose and exhaust one character he controls. Two characters instead if this attack is undefended. So, okay. So we will exhaust... Gloin. Then the forest spider attacked with three. We have a defense of one, so two damage. The snowborn scout only has one health, so the snowborn scout does die. Um, now we, after all the defense has happened, then we go into the attack phase. Uh, the first player resolves attacks. There's no enemies engaged with the first player, so we'll go into here. So we'll declare an enemy that we're attacking. So we're going to declare this forest spider. We were going to attack with both of these heroes. Yeah, we were going to attack with both of these heroes, but unfortunately we just have Aragorn now. So Aragorn is going to attack. It's going to be three. This spider has a defense of one. So two damage goes onto the forest spider. If we were going to be able to attack with Gloin, we would count up all the attacking damage and then apply the defense. It's not one defense per character that is attacking. So we would look at this would be five damage going into the forest spider, reduced by one, four, which would be enough to kill it. But the shadow effect negated that. So the forest spider has two damage and now it's engaged with us. Again, throughout all this time, we can be playing player actions. Make sure you check that uh, turn reference in the description below because that's going to be really key to kind of learn and continue to get better at this game. Which I already, I, I already missed something. I already missed something. So remember Aowen, how she can, uh, we can discard cards to make sure that our threat is uh, mitigated or our, that her willpower goes is increased. We could have used the ability to discard Steward of Gondor after we had flipped the cards and not increased our threat. So right there, again, there's a lot going on in this game and I already missed that. So that's fine. That's fine. But we'll get it next time. We'll get it next time. Okay. So now at the refresh phase, all players refresh every single card they control. We raise our threat by one. So each player raises their threat. So we're at 26 and 31. And then the player token passes to the left. And in a two-player game, it bounces back and forth. Okay, excellent. So now we're back in the resource phase. So we will pass out one resource to every hero.
We got a lot of money over here on the spirit side. We have player actions. Let's go ahead and activate an action. Oh, wait. We actually get to draw a card, too. Uh, so the leadership player is going to draw a sneak attack. Nice. So sneak attack is put an ally into play from your hand. And then at the end of the phase, if that ally is still in play, is return him to your hand. This is excellent for Gandalf. I'm hoping we get a Gandalf. And then our spirit player, let's see what card we get, is a test of will. So we can cancel a treachery card. So test of will. I don't know if I've run a deck with spirit in it without a test of will. Test of will is a phenomenal card. Okay. Now we're going to activate an action. Before we go into our planning phase, we're going to go steward to Gondor and give Aragorn two resources. Boom. Money. Okay. Planning phase. So now we're over here. We're going to be playing some allies. We're going to be playing some stuff. Let's, uh... Let's go ahead. Let's check this out. Okay, this will be fun. We're going to use one resource from Gloin to play Snowborn Scout. And we're going to place one progress token on a location in play. We're going to place it on the Great Forest Web. Sweet. For Snowborn Scout is also going to be our defender against this forest spider. So that's going to be nice. Um, anything else that we want to play? We could play an archer. We could play a guard of the citadel just to get them out. Let's go ahead and do it. So let's spend two resources. I want to keep the resources in Aragorn's pool because he can pay those resources to ready after he quest. So I'm going to use these resources first to play the guard of the Citadel. So another ally onto the table for us now. Uh, and then we're going to hang out. That's, that's enough for the leadership player. Let's pass it on over to the spirit player. So we've got a lot of money over here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to spend two three four to play northern tracker so after northern tracker exhaust or after they commit to a quest place one progress token on every location in the staging area northern tracker is one of the most excellent cards in the game <laughs> it's it's so good we definitely want to hang on to at least one resource for a test of will so we don't want to be playing lorian guides we could have played strength of will last time to clear this old forest road but maybe, maybe next time, maybe, maybe our next one. Again, there's just a lot going on with this game and it's, I've, I've played it two handed like twice. So <laughs> I, I do prefer this game, uh, true solo, but I do think that the two player opens up a lot of different things that you can see, um, and, and opens up a lot of different inter interactions that you don't necessarily get with the true solo game. And so I thought it would be better to do it like this for the, um, for, for the video. Okay, so we're done with the planning phase. Let's go to the quest phase. Players are going to commit characters to the quest. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to commit this more than tracker. Place one progress token on every uh, location. So that goes to two, which meets its threshold, which means it immediately is discarded. Nice. Sweet. Love that. So we are questing for one. Aowen is four. Um... Let's have Theodred go. We'll give a money over here to Aowen. So this is one, five, six, seven, eight for Aragorn. We'll spend one resource to ready Aragorn. So eight to zero. Um, let's go... Because we have a test of will. No, you know what? We're going to leave Eleanor out there. We'll go 8 to 0. Let's go 8 to 0. I like it. So we're going to flip two cards. We've got a Necromancer's Pass. So the first player must discard two cards from their hand to travel here. That's a 3. Ouch. And then we've got a Forest Gate. After you travel to Forest Gate, the first player may draw two cards. That's awesome. So we quested for 8. We're showing 5. So that means three progress gets placed here. Two gets placed on the active location, which clears it. And then overflow goes to the main. So just like that, we are, we're feeling pretty good. We're feeling pretty good. So now this forest gate has an, okay. So again, we have the option to do actions at this point. So I could discard cards for Aowen's ability to have her, um, Increase her willpower. I'm not going to do that at this point. I think that's probably saved better saved for later. So 
We're not going to do that. Uh, but now we are going to travel. Let's travel to the forest gate. Because the forest gate says after you travel to the forest gate, the first player draws two cards. So let's travel to the forest gate. We're going to have the spirit player play strength of will as a... Um, as an action. So after you travel to a location, exhaust a spirit character to place two progress tokens on that location. So we'll play this, we'll exhaust Dune here, and we'll place two progress tokens on the forest gate. The response also states that we get to draw two cards as the leadership player. So we've got Grim Resolve, ready all characters in play, and a uh, common cause. Exhaust one hero you control and ready a different hero. Sweet. Alrighty, so, yep, so we can do player actions now, we're not going to do any, we go to the encounter phase, so we can optionally engage an enemy, there are no enemies to engage, so we're not going to optionally engage any, and then we're going to go and have them uh, engagement check us, so there's no enemies, so we're good, we'll move right into the combat phase, so we'll deal out shadow cards, that forest spider's getting one, and then we are going to resolve all the first player stuff and then or all the first player defense, second player defense, then attacks, then attacks. So the first thing that we have to do is declare an attacking enemy. We can play an action now. We're not going to exhaust a defender. We're going to exhaust the snowborn scout. He's kind of done his duty. And now we're only attacking for a two because he it did not engage us this round. So this forced response didn't happen, but... Snowboard Scout's already going to die. Resolve Shadow Effects. Oh, uh, raise defending players threat by four. Wow. Okay. So the Ungula Swan, we raise our player threat by four. One, two, three, four. All the way up to 35. Yeah. If you ever hit 50, you lose the game. Or you're, you're eliminated. And then the Snowborn Scout dies because he attacked for two. Defend with one. One life point. He is dead. We do defending attacks over here. Nothing. Now we have our attackers. We've got Aragorn to kill this guy. It turned out that I didn't need to ready Aragorn after that quest phase because I did have enough to kill with these two attackers, but I didn't necessarily know if we were going to get another enemy, and so that's why I did ready him. Okay. Refresh phase, we're going to unexhaust everybody that we got. Uh, raise everyone's threat by one, so we're at 36. Right now, I'm really hoping for one of those Galadrian's greetings for the spirit player. And then we pass the first player, and we're back at the top of the round. Resource phase, everyone gets some resources. One. We're rich over here. Two, three. One, two, three. The spirit player is going to draw a card into a stand and fight. We could actually snowborn scout this. That would be kind of fun. To bring snowborn scout back. We could do that. Um, and oh, and then the leadership player is going to draw a card into four Gondor. Till the end of the phase, all characters get plus one attack. All Gondor characters also get plus one defense until the end of the phase. Sweet. We're going to exhaust Steward of Gondor to give Aragorn two money. Boom. Okay. Planning phase. The first player gets to choose and play any cards from their hand. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do stand and fight. Let's do stand and fight because not only is that going to help us clear Necromancer's pass, but it's also going to give us a good defender if we do engage anyone with the spirit sphere. So let's spend one because to play stand and fight. So choose an ally with a printed cost of X in any player's discard pile. Put that ally into play under your control. Boom. Snowborn Scout. After Snowborn Scout enters play, choose a location and add a progress token to it. We're going to choose the Necromancer's Pass. Let's see what else we got. We got a Lorian Guide, which we could get out. Let's go ahead. Let's get a Lorian guide out there. Why not? So let's spend two, three to play a Lorian guide. Lorian guide says after the Lorian guide exhausts or commits to a quest, place one progress token on the uh, active location. So it's kind of like the Northern tracker, except it's for the active location uh, rather than those in the staging area. That's going to be all the spirit player does. Let's go over here to 
the leadership player. Mm, got this archer. That could be kind of nice. Let's get the archer out. We got one, two, three to get the archer onto the table. Archer's range, meaning that the archer could attack enemies engaged with other players. And you know what? That's probably good for us right now. Yeah, that'll be good. So we'll move into the quest phase. We're going to exhaust characters to commit them to the quest. So let's go Northern Tracker. We'll place one on every uh, location in the staging area, which will clear the Necromancer's Pass. So that's one. Lorian Guide will place one progress token on the active location. So that's going to be two, six. Dune here should not be exhausted. I'm sorry. Six, seven. Let's give Eowyn some money over there. Let's go eight, nine. We'll spend a resource to ready Aragorn. So yeah, well, let's just count it one more time. One, two, six, seven, nine to zero. Probably want to go a little bit more because I think I'm ready to kind of push a little. I'm, I'm ready to push into the next stage at this point. So let's uh, let's see if we can go ahead and do that. Mm. Let's have Dune here go. We'll have Dune here go and push us to 10 and hopefully that should be enough. So let's flip our two cards. The first one is the Mountains of Mirkwood. We can travel here. We have to reveal the top card of the encounter deck to, and add it to the staging area to travel here. And after Mountains of Mirkwood leaves play as an explored location, each player may search the top five cards of their deck for one card and add it to their hand. Shuffle the rest of the cards back into their owner's deck. Excellent card. Especially, it helps us go hunt for our Gandalf over here. So that's two. And then, oh, another one. We're just going to use our Northern Tracker to try and knock those out. So we don't have to pay the travel cost. So we quested for 10. We're showing four. So six. So one goes here. That clears. And then five onto the main. So we're six out of eight. So we're getting pretty close. And we're not going to travel because I don't want to resolve the top card of the encounter deck. Um, to travel there. I'd rather use Northern Trackers and try and chip away at those locations at the, uh, by just committing to the quest. Hope maybe we could draw into another Northern Tracker. That'd be awesome. So no travel phase, nothing to engage, no combat because we're not engaged with anything. So we go to the refresh phase. So we'll unexhaust everybody. Raise our threat. So 37 is a little high. 28 over here is fine. <laughs> and then we'll go to the top of the round. Oh, we'll pass and we'll go to the top of the round. So we'll pass out some money. Two. Three. And we'll draw a card into a common cause. So exhaust one hero you control to ready a different hero. Then over here, we'll pass out. Did I pass out money over here? I don't think I did. No, I definitely didn't. Because AON was given one. And then we'll draw into, ooh, there's, there's, uh, there's our Gandalf. Gandalf is also really good. So after Gandalf enters play, we get to draw three cards, deal four damage to an enemy, or reduce your threat by five. So usually what happens is I use Gandalf to deal a lot of damage. If I don't have a tactics player, which we don't have any red players right now. If I don't have a blue player, usually I'm using him to lower threat. Or if I don't have a green player, which is really good at drawing cards, sometimes I'm using him to draw cards. So it, he's so flexible. And then he's a 4-4-4, four, 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 so he can do pretty much anything. He can do no wrong. So Gandalf is excellent. We're not going to play him right now because uh, I, I know there may be a big enemy coming out later. And so I'm going to hang on to him for that just in case we need him for damage. It is the leadership player's turn over here. We do have Brock, which we have 2-4-6. We have enough to play Brock. Um, but I don't necessarily want to play Brock right now because that would deplete Aragorn of resources. I kind of want Aragorn to have some resources. Hmm. Okay. So we're, we're actually not going to play anything over here at the blue. We'll play another Lorien guide. So we'll spend, uh, one, two, three to play a second copy of Lorien guide. 
and that's probably good. That's probably good there. We could actually, you know what? Let's do this. Let's do one to play a power of the earth onto this mountains of madness. The attached location gets minus one threat. So now instead of four, we're showing three in the staging area. That just gives me a little bit more leeway because I know that's going to be out for probably three, three rounds. Going into the quest phase, we're going to commit some characters to the quest. We've got two Lorian guides for two. We've got a Northern Tracker, which will place a progress token on every location out there. Uh, we've got Eowyn for four. We've got Theodred, which will give Eowyn uh, money. So it's going to be one, two, three, seven, eight. 10 we'll spend a resource to ready we also didn't use steward of gondor so let's go ahead and use steward of gondor this we can do actions at this point and so we're at 10 showing three which should be enough it's got to be enough we only need one or we only need two to go by so i'm feeling pretty confident there so let's go ahead and do that let's go 10 we're gonna flip into another mountains of murkwood oh my goodness Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, so if we can survive this, we're going to find a lot of cards. So that's going to be nice. That's going to be nice. We're going to be able to search our deck and get the cards that we need. But it is surviving this that is going to be the problem. Oh, deal one damage to each exhausted character for the Necromancer's Pass. So that, I'm okay with that. I'm okay. We could cancel this with our Test of Will. But I would rather hang on to the Test of Will because we have not it wouldn't kill anybody so i'm okay with that so let's go ahead and just pass out some damage so we got one two three four five so not not great but it also could be way way worse so we quested for 10 we're showing two four five so five gets placed the extra does not spill over to the next so at this point, we are going to check, and we did progress. Let's read what happens. A fork in the road. As you move through Mirkwood, hounded by spiders, the forest path forks before you. A fork in the road. Unsure of what lies ahead, but spurred by the urgency of your message, you choose a path and proceed. When you defeat this stage, proceed to one of the to a chosen path stages at random. So this could change the game pretty significantly. Uh, okay, so again, we are going to not have any encounter phases. We're not gonna travel because I don't wanna resolve any more cards. Uh, so there's no combat, no defense, no attacks. We're right into the refresh where we unexhaust and get scarier. So increase our threat to 38 and 29. And we're back into the resource phase. We have a lot of money over here on the leadership side. I'm going to pass out money. We'll remember to do Steward of Gondor this time. We'll go ahead and exhaust Steward of Gondor to give Aragorn two more money. Oh, we got a Faramir. Huge. Faramir is really good. And we've got a, a Strength of Will. Okay, so after you travel to a location, we can exhaust the character to place two progress tokens on that location. Okay. So we could travel to this Mountains of Madness if we wanted to and go ahead and clear it. But honestly, I'm, I'm okay with our Northern Tracker kind of cleaning up for us. Uh, oop, we forgot to pass this. So Spirit goes first. I'm, uh, we got nothing. I got nothing that I want to play. The, we, we could we, we could get a little crazy. We could play Dwarven Tomb to get a Stand and Fight and then play Stand and Fight to get another Snowborn Scout out. That's actually... Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's spend one resource to play a Dwarven Tomb. Uh, return one Spirit card from your discard pile to your hand. We'll take a Stand and Fight. Then we'll play Stand and Fight, paying one resource to play this Snowborn Scout from our leadership player's discard pile. After it enters play, we're going to place one progress token on a quest, or on a location. We're going to do that onto the this middle one. This one, 
well, we can ha have clear this one will now clear because of the northern tracker and then this one i would rather keep around because it's minus one that's kind of the reasoning behind it okay let's pass it on over here to uh the leadership player we got faramir so let's go ahead and spend two four for faramir faramir says we can exhaust faramir choose a player each character controlled by that player gets plus one willpower until the end of the phase so now if we're questing with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we get plus eight. Faramir can be really, really solid. And you know what? At this point, let's go ahead and spend two, four, six to play Brock Iron Fist. Just to get him out there. We still have the resource from Aragorn to ready if we need him. But that that allows us to get another pretty beefy guy out there okay into the quest phase we go so we're going to go northern tracker which will place one progress token on every single one of these this immediately clears so this is considered a explored location each player uh, may search the top five cards of their deck for one card added to their hand and shuffle the cards so we'll go spirit first. We got one. Oh, another northern tracker. Two, three, four, five. We've got a hasty stroke, a stand and fight, a light in the dark, a wandering token, and a northern tracker. We're going to take the northern tracker. We'll shuffle these cards. Oops. Yeah. Then we got, oh, a Celebrian Stone. Nice. We got Guard of the Citadel, Sneak Attack, Faramir, and a Son of Arnor. Um, so Faramir we cannot play because we already have a unique Faramir out there. Let's go ahead and take the Celebrian Stone. I was hoping for a Gandalf, but let's take the Celebrian Stone. That's going to give uh, a attached hero plus two willpower. And then if the attached hero is Aragorn, then Aragorn gets a spirit resource icon which does not really matter in this monosphere deck but it's kind of cool okay so that was one <laughs> uh we'll go two three four five we'll give aowen a uh, resource oh wait hold on i'm sorry one two three seven eight ten we'll spin one to ready 10 we'll go ahead and exhaust faramir and choose this character so um we all all the characters get plus one so it's going to be uh 10 11 12 13 14 we only need two to progress i feel like that's probably good enough so let's go ahead and call it good there so 14 showing three we're going to flip into a great forest web we have to exhaust one hero to travel to the Great Forest Web. And then we've got Dolgador Orcs. When revealed, the first player chooses one character currently committed to the quest. Deal two damage to that character. So, okay. Um, we're going to deal two damage to this Lorien Guide. And kill the Lorien Guide. Very sad. Uh, actually, you know what? No, that's crazy. Lorian Guide is still out here committed to the quest with one. We're going to spend one resource to play a test of will to cancel the when revealed effects of that card. There you go. So 14, 3, 3, 5, 7. Uh, so we very much surpass a fork in the road. Um, so we're good there. So let's go ahead and move on. So we have to choose one of these two cards at random. Where's my dice? I don't have a dice. Um, okay, so the top is one, the bottom is two. So we'll go with the bottom one. The trail winds into one of the darkest, most tangled parts of the forest. You sense that a foul, dark presence is hurt, haunting you, and hunting you, and you move quickly in an attempt to avoid its evil. 3B Bjorn's Path. Do you attempt to follow a secret hidden trail to avoid the enemies? Players cannot defeat this stage while Ungava's spawn is in play. If players defeat this stage, they have won the game. And this has 10 
progress tokens on it. Now we're going into the travel phase. So let's go ahead and travel to Each player must exhaust one hero he controls to travel here. Let's go ahead and travel to the Great Forest Web. And so we'll exhaust Gloin. And we will exhaust Eleanor. Then over here, we're going to play Strength of Will. So after you travel to a location, exhaust a spirit character to place two progress tokens on that location. So exhaust Dune here. Place two progress, which does clear it. Now we are going into the encounter phase. And we can't travel to another place. We, we've we already traveled. So even if we wanted to travel to a second location, we can't do that uh, because you can only travel to one. So in counter phase, it's going to engage over here or here. And since we start with the highest enemy or the highest threat, um, I'm sorry, we're, we want, sorry. Regardless, we get to choose the enemy first, or we get to choose an optional engagement first. We do want the Dolgador orcs to, a, to attack over here. Um, so let's go ahead and choose an optionally engage over here. Combat phase will deal in counter cards. We'll resolve defenders over here first. There's nothing. So let's go ahead and defend with, who do we think? This, uh, probably the guard of the Citadel. So it's gonna be two Resolve Shadow. Attacking enemy gets plus one. If this attack is undefeated, also raise your threat by three. It is still it is considered defended. So he's attacking for three. Guard of the Citadel does not have enough health to survive that. So Guard of the Citadel dies. And then we can resolve attacks. So let's go ahead. Aragorn is enough. Three. Zero defense, three health. So we can kill the orc there. Okay. Refresh phase. We're going to unexhaust everybody. Boom. Just like that. Pass that first player token over. We're going to increase our threat. So we're at 30 and 39. Uh, in the resource phase, we're going to give everyone some money. Aragorn will exhaust Steward of Gondor to give two more, two additional money. And we'll draw a card. Leadership player gets Valiant Sacrifice. After an ally card leaves play, that card's controller draws two cards. That's an event. Okay. And then over here, we've got a Hasty Stroke, so we can cancel a Shadow Effect if we want. Alrighty. Um. <laughs> over here on the leadership side... Let's go ahead and spend two to place a Librian Stone on... Let's go on Theodred, because we know Theodred's always going to be uh, committed to the quest, because he passes out money when we do that. So, cool, let's do that. And that's going to be good for the leadership player, the spirit player. We could play Gandalf. But let's go ahead and spend two, four to play the Northern Tracker. And then we don't have enough to pay for second Gandalf, but now we have two Northern Trackers, which is really solid. In the quest phase, let's go ahead and commit this Northern Tracker, which will place one on each. This clears. So we get to both search the top five cards of our deck for a card added to our hand, Lorian Guide, Test of Will, Unexpected Courage, Fortune or Fate, and the favor of the lady. Let's take a test of will. Just in case we draw something that we don't like. Then we got sneak attack. Guard of the citadel. Another Faramir. Longbeard, orc slayer. And a guard of the citadel. Oh, well, let's take a... Sneak attack. Shuffle all of these back in. Come on, give me my Gandalf. I want my Gandalf. Let's, we got one more chance to do it. We'll commit this Northern Tracker, which will place a progress token here, which will clear that. We'll do it all again. We got a favor of the lady. Uh, power of the Earth. Unexpected Courage. Will of the West. 
and a fortune or fate. Let's go unexpected courage. Come on, we got it. Oh, I thought that recording said an hour and 50. I was like, I've been playing this way too long. I've been taking way too much time. I right, guarded the Citadel. Silverlorn Archer, Valiant Sacrifice, Snowborn Scout, and a Faramir. No, I wanted, I wanted the, uh, we'll go Valiant Sacrifice. Why not? I really wanted the, the Gandalf. I did put him in here, right? Yeah, he's there. He's there. Gandalf's there. But then you can sneak attack Gandalf, and you get his win entering play ability again, and it gets dumb. It gets really dumb. Okay, so we've got 10. We, at this point, the enemy's gate is down. Requesting for 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, because we're exhausting Faramir. So actually, hold up, hold up. Let's count that again. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, oops. 10. We'll exhaust Faramir. We'll choose this player as the character that gets plus one to everything. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We'll ready Aragorn. Or 21, 22, 23, 24. This is just dumb at this point. 24. Gloin hasn't done anything all game. 26. You think we got it? I feel like we got it. Uh, let's go, just, just to be safe, let's go 28. We're going to flip into a 2. And a 3. So we quest for 23, which is way more than enough to pass that 10, meaning that we win the game. If we were going to the other stage 3, what would happen is we would spawn, Ungolus spawn. We would get, and we would have to do a little bit more fighting. But we had the Gandalf to deal some damage to Ungola spawn. It has nine damage. Um, so that could happen. Um, but yeah, that's crazy. That was fun. We, uh, that that's kind of how I think about this game. That's what I try and do to plan out some of my actions and what I need to do, you know, if we see we have to do a quest a lot, you can have a lot of player player interaction with the Faramir, boosting up, giving, you know, plus two, four, six, eight, nine, a willpower over here with this. I mean, it's it's an incredibly fun game. Again, the this first scenario is not the most difficult scenario. It is a fairly fairly difficult first scenario. I will give it that though. It is it is pretty solid for the first scenario of the game, but the um. But the following scenarios do get a lot harder. So if you are interested in seeing those, again, the progression playthrough is listed down below with a couple of different decks. I At the start of the progression playthrough, I didn't really explain my decks all of that much, but I have started doing that because I know people enjoy that. So if you want to, um, like, as you get further along in the progression, I explain, I try and explain my strategy very heavily and just so we can see how that goes. But... If you have any questions at all, please do not hesitate to ask in the comments below, or I'm going to put a link to a Discord channel, which we talk about this uh, LCGs all the time, and the people there are so very helpful and would be more than happy to help you through any challenges that you are facing. But so comments below, any questions, join the Discord, highly recommend. Those people are great. Thank you so very much for hanging out. I'm hoping that you enjoy this game as much as I do because this game only gets better from here. The core set is really solid, but as you start go going into the starter decks that they have out now or Agmar Awakens or the Oath and the other one that I don't remember, but from the Shadows of Mirkwood pack, are they're just phenomenal quests. Every quest is so in interesting and different and throws different challenges at you, which means that you have to build your decks differently to take on those challenges, and it is just an incredibly fun game. So I hope you appreciate it as much as I do. And if again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. More than happy to help. Thank you so very much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe to the video, uh, to the channel, and hope you have a fantastic day. See you around. Peace. Thank you.